Welcome to the Sermon Audio Podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our first reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we pray by your Spirit's power Open our minds and our hearts and fill us so that we would remember and be constantly reminded who you are and who we are. You are our good shepherd. We are members of your flock, your children. And as we are yours, we ask that you would indeed guide us Direct us. Fill us that we might always remember who we are and be grateful for what you've made us. Not only physically, but especially spiritually as you paid for us by sacrificing yourself to make us your own. In your name, amen. So as we think about the um, good shepherd and we think about the sheep, you know, one of the things that came to mind is, uh, and some of you probably know this about me already, I'm a big fan of the Looney Tunes. Um, and I love watching the cartoons every time I get a chance. And uh, um, one of my favorite Looney Tunes cartoons uh, is this one. Okay, everybody seen this one? Okay, some of you have seen this one. Now, can you name the two characters? Say it again. Sam the what? Nope. Sam the sheepdog. Okay. Some people confuse the other one with a character that looks just like him as... Wiley Coyote, but it's not. Paul, you are right. His name is Ralph the Ralph the Wolf. Not a coyote, but a wolf. So it's Ralph the Wolf and Sam the Sheepdog. And and because we make sometimes mistakes in uh, identity, I I chose this, and I was just looking for this picture in particular, and I kind of let it slip my mind that this was not Wiley Coyote. I was able to find it because of using that on my Google search, but, you know, here it is. Sam the Sheepdog and Ralph the Wolf. I want you to think about, when we see this picture, who don't you see? Who don't you see? A shepherd. You don't see a shepherd in this at all. All you have is a sheepdog. Uh, And I want to draw your attention to that as we listen to uh, our first reading from Acts and go to verse 28, if you would, where I left off. Verse 28, it says this. Paul says to the elders of Ephesus, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. So, there's always a shepherd, but does the shepherd need some help? Absolutely. The shepherd needs help, and the shepherd usually has that help in the form of a... Okay? I am not the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. So what might that make me? A dog, maybe. Okay. (laughs) So when you come out of church today, you say, yo, dog. Um, So I want you to think about what we see 
in that, in that mistaken identity sometimes when it comes to the sheep. Because in the background, we saw Sam, we saw uh, Ralph, but we also saw further in the background, we saw all the sheep. Sam was watching them for one reason. Ralph was watching them for a very, very different reason. And he was watching them for a very, very different reason because of what? Not because he wanted to take care of them. He wanted to have uh, a sheep dinner. And here's, here's the point. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed because there are still predators who want to prey on us. And there are predators who want to prey on us simply because we belong to Christ. Simply because we are His. They want to prey on us. They want to destroy us. They want to chew us up and spit us out. And that's because of their hate for Christ that they hate us because we belong to Christ. And so when we come back to the beginning, go back to the beginning if you would, Ben, I want you to look at what all of this is about. Now Paul is heading to Jerusalem. As we hear later on in this verse, you know, Paul is being told by the Holy Spirit, you need to get to Jerusalem, and Paul knows that this isn't going to be uh, a trip that's ending in a, a lot of joy. And as a matter of fact, it's going to be ending in a lot of persecution for Paul. But Paul passes by Ephesus, and Ephesus is a church that Paul served for three years, and as he served that church, he grew uh, and into a great and deep relationship with these people. And so, because he has this great relationship with them, and he loves and cares about them, he wants to protect them. And so, while he's got some time to waste, while the vessel that's supposed to leave Miletus takes him you know, heading toward Jerusalem, Paul calls for the elders of Ephesus to come and join him. Now, lest you think, boy, that's a pretty heavy burden. Uh, it's less than 30 miles apart. There was a really good Roman road between Miletus and Ephesus. And so it was a fairly easy trip for those elders. They could come, visit with Paul, and then return uh, in, a, in a safe way. And so when they came to him in verse 18... It says, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Go to verse 27, Ben. Notice the verse 27. He almost repeats the exact same thing again. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. One of the biggest temptations for pastors is this. Out of fear of the response of people, out of fear of the response of members of their congregation, out of fear for backlash, certain pastors won't preach on certain subjects. It is a temptation for every pastor. If a pastor says he doesn't have that temptation, he's lying to you. Because we all have that temptation. I don't want to face backlash. I don't want to face retribution. I don't want to face somebody getting in my face because of something I said. That's not the way God wants us to be. And I will do my best and try my hardest never to be that way. And every, always to preach the whole counsel of God as best and to the best of my ability. But do you see why that temptation might exist? It's a temptation that each and every one of us faces from time to time. I don't want to say that because, why? I'm afraid of how someone else will respond to it. And if you don't think that's a real fear, then you're not watching the news in the last couple of days. And I'm going to be honest with you. After getting several emails and watching the news, 
I did call the Green Bay police and said, I hope you were on and saw the news and said, yeah, we're on this, we know what's going on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's what I'm talking about. Threats have been made to the churches in New York, in Chicago, in Minneapolis, by groups that are for abortion and have both vandalized churches and come in and disrupted services. This is real. Watch the news. We are reminded here in this passage of something very, very important for each and every one of us. Look at verse 28 again. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God. Read the last phrase with me. Which he obtained with his own blood. To whom do you belong? To whom do you belong? Christ, Jesus, God. Why? Because he died on a cross for you. He obtained you with his own blood. What's being written on churches with spray paint is, my body, my choice. It isn't your body. It's his. Not only did he create it, but he bought it back. He redeemed it with his own blood. That's what we always need to hear and remember. Remember who you are. Because a lot of people forget who they are or never learned who they are. A lot of people forget who they are or never learned who they are and therefore don't know how to follow Christ or flat out refuse to. And a member of this congregation, the person's no longer a member here, I preached on uh, Good Shepherd Sunday quite a while back and as they were coming out of church, as I had preached kind of on, you know, being a sheep. person said to me, yep, but this sheep has fangs and sharp claws. My immediate response says, then you're not a sheep. Something she probably didn't want to hear, but something she needed to hear. Because if you think it's about being on the attack and not following Christ, then you don't know what it means to be a sheep. Because being a sheep means we have to put ourselves in his care. Being a sheep means we're vulnerable. Being a sheep means that we are submissive to the shepherd and we follow where he leads because he wants to offer protection. And it also means that we are always going to be in a place where someone else is going to try to attack us. Next verse, Ben. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw the way to the disciples after them. So what's the threat Paul's warning against? Attacks will come from outside, and attacks will come from within. The attacks we see coming from the outside. Some of you may not have heard about this, but a bishop in the Church of Finland and a, a church leader in the Church of Finland had um, been brought up on charges because they spoke out against homosexual marriage and homosexuality. And because they did that in Finland, it was considered hate speech and so uh, they were brought up on charges and had to face uh, a trial for what they had said. Now, you think, well, in today's society, they were probably convicted, but they weren't. They were completely exonerated, proclaimed innocent by a unanimous decision. What do you think happened the next day? Some idiot files an appeal. 
unanimous decision, and yet you're going to appeal this. And that's the world in which we live. They are relentless, and they are constantly on the attack against Christians for who we are, for what we believe. However, it's not just from within or from outside. It's also from within. I want you to think maybe a week ago, watching the news, and in front of the Supreme Court was a case of a football coach, a high school football coach, who was fired because he prayed. Okay, you guys hear about this? I see a lot of head shaking. While the Supreme Court was about to hand down their decision, in front of the Supreme Court building had gathered a group of clergy. And the group of clergy was not there in support of the coach who prayed. The group of clergy was there in support of the school that had fired him. Saying he had no business to pray in public. Okay, granted, Jesus said, don't be like the Pharisees and pray in public to be seen by men. But it also says, judge not, lest you be judged. Was his prayer there to be seen by men, or was his prayer sincere? I can't be the judge, nor should they have been. And that's really the point. And we see these attacks all over the place. Not merely the ones I just mentioned, but more and more and more and more frequently, this is consistent. But as we see this, we always need to recognize verse 31. Therefore, be alert. And all of us need to be alert. Going back to verse 28 again. Pay careful attention to yourselves. Knowing this stuff's going on. Knowing these attacks are coming. Knowing what's going on around you. Ben, could you put up the next picture for me, please? Jesus, our good shepherd. Where is his view? He's not watching the little lamb at his feet. Where is his view? He's watching the wolf. He's the one protecting us. He's the one giving us his protection, not only by keeping his eye on the wolf, but by keeping us close. He knows where the lamb is because that lamb is right there next to his leg. He wants to keep us close, and he does that by feeding us with his word, by speaking to us in that word, our hearts and our minds, by feeding us with his own body and blood, by washing us with the waters of our baptism. He's keeping us close and making us his own and reminding us that we are under his tender care. But does that mean that we're safe from attack. No. Then next verse. The thief comes only to steal and kill and both from outside and from within. The devil's the thief. The wolves are the thief. They're going to seek to attack. But who is there with us? Jesus says, read it with me, I came that they may have and Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Does he care enough about you to give you life? Does he care enough about you to preserve you from the wolves? Does he care enough about you to give you his gifts? Yes. Yes. Ben, could you go to the epistle reading and could you go to verse 17, the last verse? In Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, read it with me. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Are we going to be free from suffering? No. Are we going to be free from physical death? No. Are we going to face grief 
Yes. Sadness? Yes. Tears? Yes. But who is there to comfort us? Jesus is. And that's what we have to keep in mind in the midst of everything that goes on around us all the time. Ben, this is a quote from Abraham Lincoln. The shepherd drives the wolf from the sheep's throat for which the shepherd thanks, or the sheep thanks the shepherd as a liberator, while the wolf denounces him for the same act as the destroyer of liberty. Plainly, the sheep and the wolf are not agreed upon a definition of the word liberty. This is written, of course, quite a few years ago. But have things changed? True liberty is what? Knowing the good shepherd and trusting in him. That's true liberty. It's not complaining, you're stealing my liberty because you're stealing my freedoms. Watch the posters that are circling the Supreme Court this week. Last one, Ben. Yes, I hope you can see the picture. This one's a little bit harder because everything kind of blends in. What you see is a dog here, and the only color that you can really see for sure is a lot of blood around the dog's throat. I want you to, before you get all bent out of shape on this, just hear this. This sheepdog saved that sheep that's right up next to it from the wolf. Unless you get all nervous, some of that blood is the dog's blood. Most of that blood is the wolf's blood because the dog is wearing a very, very spiked collar, and so when the wolf went for the throat, of course, it had a lot of damage done. Didn't mean the dog was without injury. We're going to face our injuries because of what comes against us. We're going to face our trials. We're going to face our hardships. We're going to face very painful suffering at times. But remember who's there to comfort us. And I'm not saying wait for some sheep to come to your door, knock and say, hey, can I hang out with you a while? (laughs) Go back to verse 17 in the epistle reading. Who also is the good shepherd? For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He's comforting us because he went through the worst of it already. He's comforting us because he freed us from the worst of it already. He's comforting us because we are assured of life in him already. And Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long to gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. Moms, on Mother's Day, how many times have you had to gather your chicks? How often do you think Jesus needs and tries to gather us? He loves us. He cares for us. He redeemed us with his own blood. And he'll bring us through whatever suffering comes our way. He has come to give you life and give it to you abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.